Outrocast. Thank you both for doing this. And more importantly, thank you for putting such important educational yet entertaining art into the world. So first to Alex, how long was this film in the works for? So about two and a bit years. So we actually started making the film before COVID-19 emerged, or at least until it was reported that COVID-19 had emerged. And it was obviously going to be this film that was this warning that if we don't change our relationship with animals and the way that we consume, then we create risks in terms of pandemics, antimicrobial resistance. And then obviously a pandemic happened a few more months into making the film, which changed things because it was like, we're making a film that touches on pandemics and what's actually happened. So uh, we had to kind of shift gears a little bit there and the film had to become not just a kind of warning, but also a reaction to the here and now as well, which made things like that a little bit more difficult. And I think that's um, obviously like the practicalities of making a film during a pandemic is one of the reasons it took so long to make. Now, how did you two meet? So I met um, Alice because someone else we'd interviewed as part of the film said, you know, you should really speak um, to Alice. And um, I looked at some of uh, the work Alice had done previously, some of the videos, and, and it was just so obvious that we needed to interview Alice as part of the film. And then the more we watched Alice's interview that we did, the more it became obvious that actually Alice's story um, felt like it would be something that would form a really nice through line. And because Alice obviously, uh, as Fritz will talk about in a minute, went on such an emotional journey. Sure. Uh, and, um, so finding Alice was, yeah, it was a bit of a gem, you know, and that's the point that the film sort of started coming together. Alice, is it okay we're not referring to you by your doctor name? Of course, yeah, just Alice is great. <laughs> uh, were you in any way hesitant towards participating in this project. I said that because a lot of really smart people, and I'm calling you a really smart person, and a lot of accomplished people, <laughs> and yes, I'm calling you a really accomplished person, kind of shy away from the attention of being on camera and having to do media. Yeah, uh, it definitely didn't come naturally. <laughs> I sort of have a very sciencey, nerdy life uh, usually, but um, I, I left the industry I was working in and decided that I absolutely had to do something about all the awful things that I was seeing. So, you know, this was a brilliant opportunity to share what I what I learned and what I know. Um, so I just had to go for it. And we, it took a little while to warm into the interviews <laughs> that we got there. Alice, do you remember around how many days or hours of filming you were involved with? It's really tough to tell documentaries because sometimes all you hear is a 30 second soundbite and you find out, oh, well, they followed me for three days. Yeah, um, it was over several months, but it was, I think, only about seven or eight days total, something like that. But yeah, because it because of the pandemic and there was all sorts of things happening. It just, it, yeah, we kept thinking, oh, we've got to include that. And you know, new cases came up of uh, diseases and antibiotic resistance, new data. So yeah, we just kept going back to little bits of it. Now, Alex, as I said to, at the top here, important subject that the documentary is covering and an extra layer of coolness is that some celebrities have come, abo uh, come aboard as producers and went, we endorse this, we believe in this. When in the process did Rooney and Joaquin get involved? Yeah, so we've been making the film for a few months and um, COVID-19 uh, had emerged and as a result of that they were looking to make their own film on this subject and then they happened to hear about what we were doing and they approached us and they said why don't we just like collaborate and obviously we were like yeah of course <laughs> you know uh, we're going to turn that down and um, they have just been like super supportive of the whole process and they've I know um, you know you get exec producers who come and they just put their name on something and then right. they just and whereas they were really kind of like um, not part of the everyday production of course but they were they seen every draft of the film uh, critiqued every draft and they've given their feedback and and um, really been part of like forming the documentary so it, it's been really uh, you know a bit of a, it's a bit of a dream for me um to have that experience you know as a filmmaker but it's made the film 10 times better, I think. Sure. It, in my case, as a person who tapes interviews all the time, anytime I tape an interview with a really, really notable 
person. My bio may have been updated, uh, you know, to name drop a little bit. Alice, has, has your bio been updated when it says, you know, and work with Academy Award nominee? <laughs> is, or is that happening yeah. in the future? I do, yeah, I do drop it in sometimes, you know, if I'm positioning myself to go and do a talk for people, I'll be like, I'm involved in a wacky in Phoenix and Rooney Mara documentary and after award winning director Alex Lockwood. <laughs> so yeah, it comes in occasionally, just, you know. Yeah, now Alex, <laughs> Alex, uh, your credits were fantastic even before this. And as you mentioned, you know, towards the beginning of the interview, two years and change of working on this because it predated COVID. Uh, how long do you plan to do the media circuit on this before it's like, hey, the next project, let's talk about this? Yeah, it's a tricky one. I guess we sort of play it by ear really and see, um, see how much needs to be done. Um, I've already started working on my next project, but obviously I haven't started talking about that and, and stuff. And I think um, you have, um, a certain amount of energy for something and then right. it drops off so I've got to I think I'll know when I get to that point where it's like my energy for this is just like gone but I think particularly for now and, for, and until the film is out there and, and for all to see um, we just want to keep sort of shouting about it and, and sharing about it. Uh, same question goes at you Alice the bio that I have on you talks about the past from 2015 to 2019, you worked here and then you're in the documentary. Are you allowed to say what's coming up for you if there's a book, if there's anything like that? Um, my life's been a bit of a random assortment of whatever opportunity comes up that I think is valuable, I will do. So I've uh, co-authored uh, a book, I did a guest chapter for a book um I've done an interview for another documentary which will hopefully be out I think next year um I do public speaking um random interviews bits of writing articles and stuff like that so um in terms of what's coming up in the future I have some ideas but yeah we'll see see how it all pans out <laughs> so winding down here my last question for both of you has nothing to do with the greatness of the end of medicine it's it's more about both of you and that's, and I'll go with Alex first. Um, do you have a TV recommendation you could pass along besides the end of medicine being streamable on all great video on demand outlets? Do you have a TV recommendation you could pass along for me and my wife? Cause we keep finishing every show in four days. Um, well, I, I, I watch a lot of trash TV. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, so I'm working my way through Selling Sunset, which I'm a bit ashamed about. But really, if I was gonna recommend something like um, that I, uh, you know, the, something that a filmmaker would probably say. Um, I recently watched The Rescue, uh, I think on Disney, and uh, that uh, it's a it's a one-off documentary, um, and it's it's brilliant. Um, I, I strongly recommend watching The Rescue. Um, you're, you know, you'll you might not be able to breathe whilst watching it for a bit because it's very tense, but yeah, it's it's amazing. There you go. Same question to you, Alice. Oh, that's so hard. I also watch a lot of trash TV to like combat the burnout that comes with my life. Um, if I was going to be sneaky, I'd say another one of Joaquin Phoenix's films, Earthlings, should be watched by everyone. <laughs> I don't know whether you've come across that. Uh, but if I'm being normal, I will say Ozark or what else I watch that's been good. Um, Hannibal, the TV series with Mads Mikkelsen, was a real strong one. That's really interesting <laughs> and intriguing to hear that two accomplished people can just turn their minds off when it comes to being entertained. And I, I really appreciate those answers. But more importantly, I appreciate what you're doing with this film and look forward to both of your future contributions to society. Thank you for being you. Oh, thanks Thank you much. so much. Thank, Thank you for having us. <laughs>